off the bat, let's get a loom shot out of the way because that is probably what you're uh, interested in as well because that was one of the main selling points for me on this Laco Arkham that I uh, bought about four weeks ago now. So yeah, let's uh, give it a few seconds of the portable sun and uh, we'll kick off with the, uh, with the review. Check that out. That is the Type B Flieger dial and one of the main reasons, um, one of the top three reasons anyway, why I chose the Arkan uh, Type B Flieger from uh, Laco, which is part of their Pilot Watch Basic range. Now, don't be dissuaded by the word basic. It is anything but completely basic. The quality is Laco through and through. Uh, I opted for the optional uh, anti-reflective crystal upgrade now, on the Pilot Watch original range, you do get anti reflective coating on the crystal, but it's only on the underside, um, not on the top side. To get the top side, you need to pay an additional, I think it's $100 uh, Euros extra on the original range to get the same quality of AR, whereas it's only $60 on the Arkham. Um, so you go from no AR coating to 13 layers of AR coating, 10 layers on top and three on the bottom. So hopefully we'll, those 10 layers on the top will give it quite a bit of scratch resistance um, as well, because one of the downfalls of AR coating on the front is any scratches just take off a layer of that AR coating you have there, which is very obvious when the light shines on it, um, especially on watches that don't use heavily layered on the front. So I'm hoping over time, this will show that to be the case and lack of uh, obviously thought this through they're not gonna put something into one of their watches that doesn't last or uh, or scream high quality at least not from my uh, experience and research that I've done online anyway um, but the way the way it glows and the way it sort of gleams bluey purple in daylight and under any light source to be honest is is just so cool and one of the reasons why I've always looked to get a watch with AR coating if it's available, uh, even if it's an option, I'll always pay the extra to, to get that. Uh, I have a Baltic Axoscape here, which I'll talk about as well because these two watches are very similar in size. I still don't know if this has AR coating or not. I think it's got a couple of layers on the underside, but that's, that's about it. This doesn't have any sort of blue tint or anything like that. It's just standard AR coating. I chose also the LACO 31 movement. Now this is the Myota 8315 compared to the standard 8215. Uh, the changes here are 60 hours of power reserve, uh, which I have confirmed to be accurate. The additional option that I chose was the engraving. Now this is a free option that you can choose. You can have it on the back or on the front. And um, I chose the FL23883 marking. Uh, FL obviously stands for uh, Fleeg rumor for Fleeg, Fleeg Numa. I pronounced that wrong completely, uh, no doubt. Uh, 23 was designated as the watch to be used for timing flight and monitoring flight, and the 883 uh, was designated to the German testing office for aeronautics. So it's a bit of a throwback to that original Luftwaffe era, uh, as it is a pilot watch, of course. There are some slight variations in the modernization of this one in the Arkan, at least anyway, because the lugs themselves are not completely straight and sticking straight out of the side of the case. Um, I actually prefer these lugs because they hug the wrists a bit, bit nicer and um, just looks a bit more modern. But what we have is 316L stainless steel brush finish with a very, very nice detailing, to be honest with you. The quality of the, the brushing strokes and the way it looks and feels is, is top notch and you kind of expect that with Laco no matter what range you're you're buying. We do retain the onion crown. Um, although from the side profile it's not as stick it doesn't stick out as much as the original range's slightly bigger diamond shaped onion crown. Um, but it's still easy to grip, easy to um, hand wind and it's not a screw down crown is it is just a push out there's a bit of friction and you do get a bit of noise from uh, from the winding rotor as well no uh, gritty sort of grainy feel but there is you do you do have a certain amount of resistance you definitely know when you've reached full uh, power reserve because there is a audible click that you can hear from the movement itself so i'll try and do that next to the mic so you can uh, so you can hear
So hopefully you heard that clicking noise just to show that it is uh, is fully wound at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a very nice, very nice movement, uh, workhorse movement as well, reliable uh, in under Laco's uh, adjustment and regulation uh, hands. It is very accurate as well. And as it is the 8315 movement, there is a ghost position for where the date wheel uh, used to be. So you do need to pull it out twice to begin uh, hacking seconds and adjusting the time. Um, it's not an it's not an annoyance for me. I know some people online will um, will have issues with that. They they want the ghost position removed, which is fair enough. The nine a three nine has no date movement or no date position at all either. So that's quite cool. It would have been nice to see something like a nine a three nine in in this watch. The price of a nine a three nine movement isn't huge as it is anyway. So it would have been it would have been nice, but then you don't get a sixty hours power reserve either uh, the 8315 is a nice movement though uh, you get some nice decoration you've got that additional per large you've got some blue screws as well which i'll try and catch in in the focus and the light there i don't know if that's uh, ob obvious now they are painted blue they're not heat treated or anything like that so just just expectations need to be set of course and um, it is a freewheel winding rotor so it will only it will only wind one way and freewheel the other way. And uh, you do hear that, uh, like the 9039 and 9015 uh, before it, the rotor is is slightly noisy. I don't mind it at all. I know, again, some people online, they do mind a, a noisy rotor. They want complete silence, like a ETA movement. But um, I don't mind it. I think it gives a watch character, and um, it's a, an audible sign that you are wearing something mechanical, uh, not quartz or uh, digital or anything like that and um, it's just part of the watch's overall character really dial wise very legible ar coating of course that helps um, the dial itself is matte in texture and that suits the strap that i've got on here at the moment uh, which is kind of a nice segue to talk about the strap uh, Laco's leather strap it is very nice but it is twice the thickness of my hirsch uh, pure natural rubber here and personally, I've never been a fan of leather straps. Um, I can't clean them because that will start to ruin them over time. Um, they do absorb a lot of sort of sweat and moisture in the summer months when you're walking outside or doing work. Um, rubber is just easier to maintain. It's more longer lasting. Even though this hair strap is 44 pounds, this will last a lifetime it will easily last as long as the watch will and it's from Hirsch as well so you are getting some top quality uh, rubber and, and sort of construction and engineering there as well I also like the curved interior of this strap so you've got a central channel to uh, get some airflow to your wrist so you're not sort of overheating or uh, or sweating or anything like that over over prolonged uh, wear periods and even the keepers are curved as well as you can see there there are two keepers one is on a sliding section and the other one is on a tab section so it keeps it in place and i've just transferred over the Laco buckle from the leather strap as well which is a perfect fit the other thing to note is the Laco strap does not come with quick release spring bars so i like to swap out straps every now and then i've got a, a few straps that i like to um, swap out with I've also got a Tropic strap from Joseph Bonnie. Again, quick release. But as the lug to lug is 18 millimeters, it's quite hard to find 18 mil Tropic straps. But Joseph Bonnie do do them. This isn't natural rubber, it's silicon only, unfortunately. They do vulcanize the natural rubber in their 20 mil range, which is what I've got on the Baltic. And uh, that's really nice. I would have liked one of these on, on the uh, Arken, but it's nigh on impossible from everything that I've checked online. So if anyone out there does know uh, an 18 millimeter Tropic strap, which is natural uh, rubber or vulcanized rubber, or even FKM or, or something like that, do let me know in the comment section and I'll uh, I'll get one of those because I do like Tropic straps. But on back to the Hirsch, it is uh, it is a very nice strap and the 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 matte sort of textured dial on the on the Arken is almost an exact match to the texture, uh, very similar on the strap itself. So they kind of go hand in hand, you know. And I just think it looks it looks really nice and and classy. 
online photos of the strap make it look quite shiny or glossy but it really isn't and as you can see there it's got a satin sort of finish to it which is very similar to the same sort of quality on the on the dial itself that's probably a good angle to see it on but yeah it's it's a very nice strap and it's it's quite thick at the top and it sort of tapers into a bit thinner and it has a bit of a curvature to it as well so it suits the watch uh, case and, and lug design which is which is quite nice movement accuracy wise mine has been doing plus seven seconds a day uh, when stored dial up in the uh, watch case when wearing it depending on the climate and conditions obviously it, it does vary but i'm running about five to ten, sec 10 seconds uh, with mixed wear um, that's really good it's well beyond myota's own specs and lacco do regulate and adjust all of their movements regardless of the collection you buy from whether it's original or basic uh, fit and finish very solid it doesn't feel like a, a 39 millimeter watch when you're wearing it it is quite chunky as you can see but the difference in size between that and the baltic aquascape that i've got here is only 0.5 millimeters but when you look at them side by side you wouldn't tell they i mean one looks considerably thicker than the uh than the other even though there's only 0.5 mil between them i just get a quick shot on my wrist i can't remember the exact uh, dimensions of my wrist but um it's I'd say just around about the six inch mark so that's that's on my wrist there um, it looks a lot bigger in the video because of the wide angle lens on on the camera but it's it's not overhanging the wrist or anything at all I don't know if it's completely visible on camera but, but it is it's very comfortable it wears very nicely it's quite lightweight as well it's not like a dive watch even though it is quite thick and, and stainless steel it doesn't it doesn't feel heavy on the wrist really impressed with it like the loom like the the movement like the attention to detail and the quality like this little customizations the like i've done don't like the strap too thick for me not pliable enough uh, the leather straps but some people like those not for me, I like rubber, natural where possible, uh, but I'll go for a silicone as well if, if nothing else is uh, available. Love the AR coating. All in all for under £450, including those optional uh, extras. Can't go wrong. Throw in a good strap, you're looking at less than £500 for a Pilot Watch Type B dial. Amazing loom, accuracy, which is really good. And a uh, watch that just oozes quality when you when you look at it. So yeah, if you like this, um, I'll do some more watch reviews and see if I can get some more watches in and, uh, and talk about those. Until then, see you on the next one.